This video is brought to you in part by Chrono.gg. Chrono.gg is a great website that sells one video game per day at an incredibly low price. If you want to support myself and a good outlet for picking up your games, check out Chrono.gg slash Downward Thrust. Very rarely does a video game arrive on the market as a newcomer and unexpectedly grow into something gigantic in scale. A naive, tiny succulent grown into a beast of a franchise towering over its competition. These games demand attention, we wait for them eagerly, and we usually get them every year or two. We can almost count these anomalies on a few hands though. Zelda, Call of Duty, Halo, Grand Theft Auto, Assassin's Creed, Mario, Final Fantasy, Battlefield, and of course, Far Cry. It's a funny thing, games becoming cult phenomenons. Where does it all take root and how does it happen? Is it by chance, genius game design, perhaps smart marketing, or just because the game is so unbelievably big, bold, and inviting? Every story seems to be unique, and today we're gonna look at Far Cry's interesting journey that led it to becoming one of gaming's most identifiable phenomenons. In some mysterious way, Far Cry captured the hearts of gamers across the world and has become Ubisoft's most notable franchise next to Assassin's Creed. In 2004, gaming was an incredibly different world than it is today. It was a time when many modern gaming trends we see today would be dormant, waiting to be discovered by the suit and ties of gaming's smartest publishers. The landscape in 2000 was heavy on action-adventure games and single-player linear experiences in many action and RPG formats. And they were everywhere. Prince of Persia, Beyond Good and Evil, Half-Life 2, Doom 3, Fable, Ratchet and Clank, Kotar, and many, many more. It was the end of the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox era, and we had gotten used to playing these types of games then and years beforehand. We got caught up in games like Resident Evil 4, Eco, Final Fantasy X, Jade Empire, and Splinter Cell, to name a few. All fantastic games, yet very fitting of what is now a very old-fashioned gaming paradigm. Third-person, story-based games with an action or adventure focus. When Far Cry released in 2004, it began the process of popularizing a new gaming archetype that we now coin open world. It was unheard of to feature a 3D open world game, especially when the idea of it had only been recently explored by games like Elder Scrolls, Morrowind, and Shinmu to some degree. These two games were fantastic, for they dared to do something different, whether it be letting players play the way they wanted, explore content at their own pace, or just be a participant in a world that seemed to be alive. This concept of a gaming world being living was extremely interesting because the problem video game replayability up until this point had was that everything was the same regardless of playthrough. So the idea of being able to play a game different every single time you sat down was fascinating, though technology had restricted this development beyond isometric games like Baldur's Gate, Fallout, and more. Far Cry began to challenge what an open world could do and try to answer this question. It wasn't the first of its kind, but it was sure one of the most promising, eye-catching, and most importantly, fun. It introduced the playground-style game, one in which you could do pretty much anything you wanted to do, and gave you all the tools to do so, all the while still providing a linear narrative via cutscenes, missions, and of course, dialogue. Today the idea sounds rather old news now, doesn't it? But for the time being, this was a new development. Far Cry and the first AAA 3D open world games brought in a new blueprint on how to make a video game in an open world. It would be this seed that would spiral out of control in the years to come, as the open world formula would be explored deeper and deeper and deeper. Prior to Far Cry, many open world games like Morrowind and Shinmu always had the problem of sticking to many tried and true role playing norms standard in many old video games. You had the massive world, you had many things to do, but they were always difficult and time consuming to get into, inaccessible to many, and not immediately satisfying. Far Cry's number one objective was to rectify those three things. Far Cry has a wickedly smart format that it keeps repeating game after game. A high quality cutscene to kick things off, some brief exposition with the main villain, and a small action or stealth based section veiled as a tutorial. 
but after those 20 minutes or so, it immediately drops you into the world and releases all control directly to you. Not just over Mission 1, but the entire map, every nuke and cranny, every character, side activity and distraction right away. This was something new to open world games at the time. You can begin killing enemies, raiding camps, blowing up outposts, and roaring down the map in a variety of vehicles and trucks. You can go anywhere you see and do pretty much anything you want within, of course, some reason. This is the true unsung hero of Far Cry that no one seems to talk about. The fact that any single player can jump right in and immediately have crazy open world fun in their own unique way. This was missing from Shenmue, from Morrowind, Kotar, and all other open world or on rails story based games that came before it. And that is such an important thing to realize. Those games are some of the best of the best, but good lord, do they take some time to get into. We're talking hours upon hours of play, listening to literal bookloads of dialogue, climbing huge progression trees or arbitrary grinds to get anything meaningful or fun to play with. And that's fine, because they are two different types of games. Far Cry decided that it would take all the things that held back the player from engaging in immediate fun and put them in the back seat. They're still there though, you have big skill trees, tons of crafting, lots of story content and plenty of characters to talk to, but all of that is secondary to its accessibility. That's the big beauty of Far Cry, it doesn't hold you back from just having fun, straight away, designing a system wherein you control the pace of progression and story and downtime that was otherwise forced upon you in the past. This is the main reason why I believe Far Cry has become the phenomenon it has, because it realizes that everyone wants to play games differently. No two players will play Far Cry 3 the same, and many people won't even complete the campaign because of how fun the open world is just to be inside of. By removing all the time investment people had to spend on open world games just to get to that point where they could have that fun freedom, Far Cry devised a gaming experience that drew in so many people. The great thing is though, it never sacrifices on what it puts on the back burner though. Far Cry games introduce some of the coolest villains, they have some of the most exciting story missions, although their stories are actually quite blasé on the whole, and they give you so much to work for. Perhaps they give you too much to do, but the beauty of it was that if you didn't want to collect those 10 bear asses to upgrade your backpack, you simply didn't have to. But if you wanted to, it was there for you to do it. With such a focus on the fun, while still keeping all the other trimmings available in the back seat, Far Cry took hold of gaming and never let up. Today, Far Cry is up there with gaming's most popular franchises. We may bemoan it as a repeat offender of its formula time over time, but it does do enough nearly every game to keep the masses interested. This video wasn't made to praise Far Cry. I simply wanted to showcase how it blew up given the very different gaming environments in which it was introduced and how it flipped the script on the open world norm to prioritize being fun forward and immediately accessible. It's not a revolutionary act, but sometimes the smallest tweaks can have the most lasting impacts. And Far Cry has definitely been one of those games. Thanks for watching guys, do me a favor and comment below and answer this question. If you were Far Cry 6, where would you be? and what would you do differently? Have a kick-ass day, guys, and we'll see you in our next video.